Archeon is my absolute favorite plugin for building, and I want to teach you how to use it. You will need to become a patron to Arcaniacs to get access to this plugin. I'll provide a link to his Patreon in the description. Once you have it ready on your server, we can start. This is an updated version of my previous loft tutorial, and I will be doing it in two parts. In the first part, I'll cover the basics of how to use the tool, and in the second part, we'll focus more on different applications for it. Loft is a bit different from other commands I've covered in this series for two reasons. It's comprised of multiple commands to achieve an end result, and you can also use paper to help assist in the selection process. Let's cover the basics of the commands first so you know what each one does. First, we have loft frame, which will create a new frame in a loft selection. It's always the first command you run when doing loft. I'll get more into what a frame is in a little bit. Next, there is loft point, which adds a point to the last frame. This is all part of the loft selection process. Then we have loft remove, which will remove the last point we made in our selection. Then there's loft clear, which will clear our entire loft selection. And finally, we have loft set, which is what will generate the shape based on our selection. There are also some flags that can be used for a couple of these, and I'll show them to you later in this video. So, how do you make a selection with loft? At a minimum, you need at least two frames in order to set a loft. You can do this by typing out a command and a frame being created where you're standing, or by left-clicking with a piece of paper. However, all we have accomplished with that is we've selected a straight line, which isn't typically how loft is used, and that's why we have to add points to each frame. Selecting a frame with loft is much like stitching a row in crocheting. You're going to select row upon row, and those will connect to make a pattern, or think of it as a 3D version of connect the dots. A frame is the same thing as one of these rows, and always starts with a frame command and ends with any number of point commands. Even though you need a minimum of two frames, you can have any number of points you want following each frame. It could be two points, it could be 20 points. And the whole purpose is you can create very intricate curving patterns by adding more points to each frame. And that's why you can create cloth and other types of flowing material very easily with this command. I love the visualizer with this command because it makes it so easy to see the shape that you're making. Once you're satisfied with your selection, all you have to do is loft set with a block type and boop, instant cloth shape. A selection doesn't have to be rectangular though. You can get creative with it. As a basic example, you could create a triangle shape like this which consists of three different frames, but each frame is sharing the same secondary point. As long as you can visualize the shape you're trying to make, the possibilities are literally endless. Let's say you're happily making this giant loft selection and whoops, you accidentally added a point in the wrong spot and you don't wanna to have to redo the whole thing. That's where the loft remove command comes into play and you can run that command to remove whatever the last point was in your selection. There's also a handy dandy flag you can use with this command. If there's a point somewhere in the middle of your selection you want to remove, maybe it looks off to you or it's messing with your overall shape, you can fly right up to it, do loft remove minus C and it will remove that closest point. Also remember, you will need to clear a selection before making a new one. This is easy to forget because once you set a loft, you can't always see your selection if the blocks are covering it and starting a new loft somewhere will add to your existing selection. It's pretty easy to know when you've made a mistake, but don't forget to clear your selection when you're done with it. There is another number we can add when setting a loft, and I'll demonstrate what that does here in a second. There are also some flags I need to show you as well, but first we'll cover the rest of the standard command. All right, so you've got your loft selection, and there is an additional number, like I said, that you can add when setting this. So let's run the command like normal. We'll do loft set, pick any block you want. I'm going to do lapis, which is 22. And we can add another number after this that will divide our loft into multiple sections. So for example, let's add number four as the count parameter, because that's what this is. And then it's going to create, wait a minute, it's going to create 
five lines. Why is that? Well, that's because it's counting the sections in between the lines. So here you have one section, two, three, and four. It's outlining each of those sections. So it's a great way to evenly divide the shape of a loft for extra detail or lots of different things. Actually, there's lots of uses for this command. But an important thing to note is that the direction of the lines that it's creating is fully dependent on the direction that you selected them. So I made the selection from left to right, or I made it sideways like that. So that's why the lines are going sideways. If I were to make another selection going across this, but let's go perpendicular to the lines that I've already created here. And then if we run the same command, it's going to create sections of four going in the opposite direction, because again, that was the direction that we selected our frames. And I've also showed you just now how you can easily create a netting pattern using the loft command, easy peasy. But we're not finished, we're just getting started. There's a lot more that this command can do. Let's take a look at some flags that we can also use for this command. Let's start by setting our loft. Oh, by the way, you can also use slabs when setting this and it will perfectly and smoothly set them. So let's try that just to mix things up a bit. Let's use smooth quartz slabs. And then if we add the flag, well, first let's run it without the flag so we can see what it does. Running it without the flag, you're going to get something that looks like this. And you'll see that the slabs do connect very nicely. See how all of the curves and everything are very smooth and rounded? Well, if we want to instead have it be sharper edges, we can do the minus P flag, which will create polygons instead. This shape is a bit flat, so it's hard to see too much of a difference. You can really see it over here on this end. Looking out from the side, you can clearly see how it's using straight edges instead of curved ones to create a polygon shape. You can also add minus O to the end of the command, and that will simply create an outline of your loft, regardless of how many points you have in the middle of it, it's just going to look at the outer edges and create an outline of that. The next flag I'm going to show you is the minus C flag. And a good way to demonstrate what this one does is if you try to select a cone-like shape, and mind you, it is not going to be a perfect cone, but once we get closer to the end of the circle that I'm trying to select, you'll see that it's going to be a bit difficult for me to select in the exact same point here. I mean, I could try it, but it wouldn't create a smooth round shape once I set the loft. So what I could do instead is just leave it like this with a gap in between there, then do loft set. Let's pick another block this time. How about prismarine bricks? Sounds good. And if we add the minus C flag, it's going to connect that last frame I made to the first one, which will complete that cone shape. Very cool. Another way to think about that is think about it like you're making a pocket. So if I made a selection that had one point up higher than the rest, and then the rest were like this, if I run that same command, it's going to connect that last frame to the first one and create this hollow pocket-like shape. So there's a lot of neat applications for the minus C flag. And then of course there is the minus D flag, which is one that I use quite often for making terrain. Yes, you can make terrain with the loft command. It is so OP, you can use it for literally anything. I can make whatever shape I want with my selection See if it looks good. Sure, looks good. And then I can set this. Let's use stone. And if I use the minus D flag, what it's going to do is it's going to set it on top and stack everything down to the ground. Kind of like how the Archeon Terragen command works, except for this one, you can be more precise with how you're selecting the shape, which comes in handy for small terrain fixes or even building gigantic hills like this one. Don't forget, you can also combine these flags. You don't have to use one at a time. So let's say I wanted to use minus D and minus P together. That gives us a more polygonal landscape. 
oh, but we could also add on to this since our selection is still there. I could run the same command and use something, I don't know, like course dirt, and then enter a count in there, how about 20, and whoops, it doesn't line up quite because I forgot to use the minus P flag with that, so let's run that again. This time it should match up with the existing terrain. But all of this is merely a taste of what the loft command is capable of. For example, you could build clothing, flags, sails, feathers, wings, dirt, fireworks, water, paint, terrain, grass, flowers, plants, hair, paper, roofs, just to name a few things. Because there's so much you can do with this command, I did want to spend more time on specific uses for it in a part two for this video. Obviously, I won't be able to show you every technique ever, but I can show you a few things I've learned over the years that might be helpful. Keep an eye out for that video whenever it comes out. Whether you're brand new to this tool or you're coming back here for a refresher, I hope you are able to learn something. And I wish you the best on your next building project. Have fun building!